Hello and welcome to this section of the Algebra Tutor. Uh, in this section we're going to continue learning how to factor, but we're going to kind of give you some extra tools in your tool bag for certain cases um, that help factoring become a little bit easier. I mean you already know the basic idea of what factoring is. You have a big expression and you're trying to reach in there and pull things that are common from all the terms and sort of rewrite everything by pulling some stuff out and making that expression equal to the original expression you know, after you've done the factoring. We've talked about all that stuff before. Here we're going to talk about factoring by grouping. It's kind of one of those things, occasionally you come across a problem that will benefit by factoring by grouping and then you can use it. So before we get to that point, let me go ahead and review a little bit of what factoring is and then we'll show you how to apply factoring by grouping. And you'll see that it kind of depends on certain things happening for you to be able to do it. t squared minus 3t. Let's make it t squared plus 3t. This is sort of a review. In general, factoring is you want to go in and take something out that's common. So here we, we have a t squared and here we have a t. So we know that one t is common to each of these guys. So from the last section we learned, we can pull that t out and then on the inside we need to have another t. So these guys make t squared. And then we need to have a plus 3 here. So when you back multiply, you get everything back that you started with. So this is kind of a review. We've done these kinds, this kind of problem before. But I'm just reminding you uh, what factoring is all about. Now let me give you another problem that you haven't quite seen before. What if you have x plus y times 2 plus x plus y times b? Now this looks a whole lot different because you know, I have a very large expression and then on each one of these terms I have, you know, an x, uh, something in parentheses here and something in parentheses here. So at first I don't know what I can pull out because I have a 2 and a b. I do see some x's and some y's but it looks totally different than any of the other problems that we've ever had to deal with. So, you know, at first you're unsure until you realize that here the term I have in parentheses is x plus y. Here, the term I have in parentheses is also x plus y. So what you're going to find out is that when you're factoring, you don't always have to just pull one item out like we've been doing. You can pull entire terms out as long as they're common to everything. So again, it's not a new rule of algebra. Factoring by grouping sounds like, you know, another thing we have to learn in algebra. Oh no, no, it's the same thing that we've been doing. I'm just teaching you an expansion of it. You can go in here and recognize that x plus y is common over here. It's also common over here. So I can reach in and pull them out because they're common to both things. So when I do that, I'm going to do just like I do before. I'm going to pull x plus y out. I'm going to open a new set of parentheses and I'm going to figure out what needs to go in here. And if you think about it for a minute, I think you'll agree that 2 plus b must be uh, what is inside of there. And that is the factorization of, uh, of uh, this guy when you pull out the greatest common factor. So it's pretty easy when you look here and you say, okay, I can pull out a t, right? Or if you see some numbers and you can pull them out. But if you ever see a case where entire expression is common to both of these terms, then pull it out. And, and if you do the backwards multiplication, this times this gives me this, this times this gives me that. So it's all totally legal. These two things are exactly equivalent to one another. This is called factoring by grouping. It's because you kind of look at a group of terms and you try to find out if any groups are common and you pull it out. Now what if you had something like 3 times r minus 2s minus x times r minus 2s. So again, we 